Hi everybody, it's Paul with Orlando Bonsai TV and today we're going to work on a tree that we had uh, or that I had worked on in 2011, June of 2011, which blows my mind. This pot, or this tree has been in this pot for three years, haven't done anything to it. You can see it's just very grown out and very bushy, really overgrew this pot as well. I mean it's just a, a very um, vigorous root system that's a little bit confined right now and all I really wanted to do back at that, on that day was just get it into a bonsai pot so I get up on my benches so that I can take better care of it. This will be a good opportunity for us to now do our branch selection because remember this thing was just a trunk and here's a picture of it here somewhere just to show you what the tree was looking like at that time and what process we went through. You can always watch that video, it's still up online. Um, but this one's going to show now, now after three years what we do and how we select the branches and you can see how everything's is growing straight up. So um, stay tuned and we're going to work this tree uh, and get it into a much more developed uh, bonsai and better shape and we'll at least be able to see what the finished tree is going to look like. Also I'm going to put it in this larger mica pot. It's no deeper but it's a little bit wider so it gives me a little bit better chance to actually sort through the the, uh, the aerial root, or, I'm sorry the surface roots so that we can actually straighten them out because all we did last time was just try and get them into the pot. Now we kind of want to separate them so we get nice surface roots to make this tree look nice and stable. So uh, stay tuned. The common name of this is uh, Ficus retusa. Uh, like I said earlier it's the fic Ficus microcarpa, not the macrocarpa, the microcarpa. Um, a little bit different, just different kind of leaf. Um, more of a pointy leaf on the on the microcarpa or the ficus retusa. So I figured I'd start with the with the dirty part first and let's get this thing uh, repotted in the new pot so that way once we have it all styled out it's going to be able to hold that position better and we won't be moving the branches around inadvertently when we uh, uh, swap the pots. Um, it came out of the pot very easy. Again it was in there for three years which is still surprising to me but when I look back at the video and the date of that thing it was June of 2011 and I'm like oh my goodness where has the time gone. So. All I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just start taking a, a root rake through. I do the single prong. It seems to work the easiest for me, so um, I like to say, suggest the, the single. Uh, sometimes you get these with twos or threes, but the one just slides between the pots, uh, or between the roots much easier. So I'm just going to work my way around, and then we're going to see how the roots have developed in the potting soil because it used to be in I'm sorry, it used to be in potting soil, but now it's in um, bonsai soil. So we should see some really nice feeder roots and very nice dense. Uh, roots to be able to use. Make sure you get rid of all these uh, weeds by the roots so they don't grow back uh, when you repot. Of course I got this raised up a little bit higher than I normally would be but I just want to be able to see it, or the camera to see it so that's why it's sitting up otherwise I would just be doing this down in the pot so I wouldn't be making as big of a mess as I am. But it sweeps up easy. Now here's the kind of thing that I'm talking about as far as where the roots are going to be. And this is the kind of thing we'll be able to uh, relocate. See how it's coming forward and crossing over all the other roots and plus there's roots that are growing down through. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently pull these out and separate them. Now I've got this separate root. I can uh, work it over this direction if I want, keep it as a surface root, add some strength. Instead of it crossing over and, and making it look like a tangled mess, what we're going to do is we're going to start to now have all the roots radiate from the trunk. So that gives it much more strength and it looks much more organized that way. And you can see there's a lot of uh, roots that are doing that. This one's crossing over as well. We can bring this back around and put it in a position where it should be. This one right here is going to be able to move so that when, we, when we're done we'll have a nice uh, radiant uh, circle coming from the, from the trunk um, that's going to add a lot of character and a lot of strength to the, to the overall look of the tree. And I'm finding a lot more shorter roots this time, a lot uh, better feeder roots this time compared to the last time we worked with these, uh, which were just very long roots that uh, had some feeders, but uh, far and few between. Quite a few weeds in here. Perfect opportunity to get rid of that. Make sure you get rid of those roots. Those root, those weeds will just come right back. And again, see, there's just these um, roots tend to 
meander their way down the trunk, so it's easy for them to get tangled. But once you figure out where the base of it is, I mean, this thing was tucked under way back here. We'll be able to bring it over this direction. This one is crossing. Um, kind of distracts. We'll most likely just remove that just to clean up the, the uh, roots when we get that far. Because what happens, they start to graft it together. It makes the trunk thicken up fast, faster because it's visually, uh, once the, uh, the roots thicken, they tend to thicken as well, or the trunk seems to thicken as well, so. It's a nice way for the trunk to beef up. And again, during the three years, this tree just continued to uh, get bigger and better. Um, and um, gave me a lot of branches to work with. Of course, uh, the top is the issue we're gonna have, and you'll see that when I get that far, but um, I didn't get a very good top, and I think it's because all the branches uh, grew up so high that they actually caused a lot of shadow for the tree, and it's not very open. So that's one of the goals right now, is to get this thing open so we get more growth coming off the trunk, which means more branches to work with. And you'll see I'm working a little bit differently than I did the last time. Uh, last time I was on this, it was just a matter of just reducing the overall roots, because we didn't need that many roots. So I was able just to chop up a, long, a, a large section of it without really you know, worrying that the health of the tree would be hindered because I knew the tree would recover from a, a cut like that because there were so many roots that that tree did not need. But now we're really trying to fine tune everything so we're taking our time a little bit more. Still a lot of mass below the soil line, a lot of trunk way down there, but I don't think we can go much further than we are because it does kind of flare and then kind of uh, go straight after that. We kind of want to have that flare at the top of the surface, so most likely the surface is still going to be where it's at right now. But we'll get in there. Once we see, we can uh, make that decision better. Just want to get a lot of this soil off here so I can get into that other pot and get it seeded the right way because this is probably going to be the final, uh, probably the final uh, potting before we really style at the top and then really start to develop the branches. I don't think it's going to be three more years that I wait on this tree after this video. This is going to develop very quickly for me now. So I'll try to keep it posted so that you guys are updated with what's going on. Not root bound at all. Plenty of room. This tree could have stayed in there for a lot longer. There was still plenty of room to grow. You can see how loose the uh, soil is. It falls out pretty easy. but I really want to clean it up because I really want to get all that um, weeds out and all the, the dirt out that really doesn't need to be in here. It's going to be much easier to manage if this is a, a really cleaned out tree. Nice thing about the soil mix too, it's, it's reusable, so what I'll do is I'll let this batch dry out, make sure I get all the uh, uh, weeds out so that I don't transfer it to another tree, but it's nice to be able to Continually use that soil. I'll use a fresh batch for this one. So I'm just going to turn the camera off for a second. We're going to come back when I get this thing all cleaned out. You can see what I'm doing though for the most part. And what I'm going to do is probably just get a hose in here as well and just really wash out all the, the loose stuff and then really rake it clean. And then I'll be right back. So before I get started, I just want to show you uh, what the roots look like. You know, now that I've got all the soil moved away, um, I didn't do any root pruning to this thing, but I just want to want to point out that um, the roots are not really long. These ones that are growing were actually growing out of the pot, you know, over the edge of the pot, trying to find um, you know water sources that way. That's just what this tree does. But you'll see most of the growth occurred in between the large uh, roots, which is exactly what we want. I didn't get the real long feeder, uh, you know, the real long uh, roots looking for water or looking for. Uh, or to stabilize the tree, all we got is the nice hairy roots and these are the ones that are going to feed the tree and this thing is just loaded with it now. So it's going to fit into this pot very, very nicely, really easy. But it's, I just wanted you to point out this is exactly why we do what we do with this potting soil or with this bonsai soil so that you get these kinds of roots. Okay, so here's where we're at and Cosmo decided to finally join us. You know, Cosmo's back. I uh, haven't seen him for a while but he's doing very well and we're really Happy to have him helping us with the bonsai every day. Okay, so all I did was just set this into this mica pot. And it's so funny, when you look at the tree in that pot, which looked really big when I was holding it outside the other one, it isn't quite that huge now looking at it. But I don't want to get too big or this thing's going to be just so heavy to move around. So all I've done is I've put a little bit of bonsai soil on the bottom of the pot. 
and moved, um, put the tree in position. Just kind of, you know, kept moving it back and forth till it sat nice and nice and secure. I haven't moved any roots or anything like that. So I do want to show you, let me just bring the camera in a little bit. So what we're going to do is now we're going to do a little bit of um, movement of the roots, uh, just kind of manipulate things around just to kind of get everything straightened out and make it nice and neat in here. You know, the stuff that's crossing over, we're just going to wrap down. And the stuff that was used to be curving over, we're going to bring back to where it belongs just to make this a nice straight um, base on this. And any ones we can't move, we're either going to cut or leave them as, the, as they are. It's not a, that major of a deal, but we do want to make this look much, much neater than it was. It was just a tangled mess before. And you can see it's easy to, to manipulate them when there's no soil on there. And what's going to continue to happen is once we get the roots out, this is going to be a banyan style. These are so flexible, but we're going to get more roots dropping off the branches. So you're eventually going to have a bunch of feeder roots or uh, aerial roots connecting straight off the, the, the branches instead of coming off the trunk. So even though we're, we're moving these ones, it's not a big deal because we're going to continue to get more uh, as this tree continues to grow. So we're just going to kind of continue to straighten this out. And we're just, you know, kind of routing them where they, where they would know, kind of go naturally, but without so much crossover that's distracting to the eye. Usually when you get an X on a tree, it kind of stops your eye from going up. You want to have a nice flow uh, as things move up and down the tree. So that's what we're looking to do. So that's a nice patch of similar roots together. We'll keep those going. And these ones, and then once we get the soil in, if these things don't look right, we're going to go ahead and remove some of these and clip some of these off. Now this one in particular is is uh, kind of interesting to me because it kind of comes forward, but we could put a block in there and wedge that out that way, so eventually it'll stay just like that, um, so we get a, a, a wider trunk actually and a nice surface root occurring right there. And then these ones that we're growing out, we're just going to go ahead and route right down the center here where they belong, and it's just going to continue to fill in those little gaps that we have inside the tree. These ones are up here. So we're just going to continue to wrap down. So I'm just going to continue to do this all the way around the tree. It doesn't take long. It's not hard work, but it just takes some time just to look at the best way to route, a, route some uh, roots down the tree. Again, it's going to you know, make the thing look a lot neater and make it look stronger eventually. And you can see these ones are coming off the branch, so they're not, they don't need to necessarily tuck into the branch. They can go straight down where they are, so we could either route them straight here. Now, you don't want to have something that's kind of going off on an angle. You do want to have those ones always going straight down because they just don't look right if they are pulled over that way. It just makes the trunk look just not so unnatural. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll get those straightened up straight down. Worked my way around. Now it's just a matter of just putting the soil mix in to, uh, to hold everything in place. Well, the funny thing about all this is this is actually what the video is supposed to be about, was styling this tree. But uh, since I um, had the tree out and I know it needed to be repotted, uh, went ahead and did that. So here we are. You might notice something a little bit different between this soil mix and my normal, so uh, my normal soil mix. And this is one that uh, Boone made uh, years ago with us in, uh, in Florida. And it's got uh, pumice, um, akadama, pine bark, and uh, crushed lava. So that's this mix. And I've, I've just had it for years. And I figured let's go ahead and just use it. Um, a really nice mix, a little bit different from mine that I normally use, but um, great results on it too. So it really depends on what part of the country you're in and what part of the world you're in uh, as to what kind of soil you're going to want to use. So here we go. Uh, and one last thing I do want to point out, when we do get a close up, you'll see on this, this left root, I did put the spacer in it to move that root over uh, to kind of fill in that gap. So eventually we'll have roots coming off that, which will really fill in nicely instead of having it cross like it was. I did clean it out quite a bit. Um, I'll probably take this large knob off this to make it more smooth when it, uh, you know, eventually. But other than that, the roots are now straightened up. We've got all the aerial roots hanging straight down. And now it's just a matter of bringing this tree that's growing straight up and causing all the shade in here so that I'm getting no light for the, the, for the lower branches, all my growth on the top, we're gonna open this thing up and really start to develop this tree. So in the very near future, it's gonna have a beautiful canopy on it, great aerial roots, and we'll most likely put this in a larger pot, one that's gonna go out to about here, to about here, so that the roots, or the, the aerial roots can hit all the way out, uh, and really look like it's not so uh, tight in here. But this is 
for me right now, this is perfect because I can move the tree around very well. I still got some room for the, the roots to develop out a little bit, so it's going to serve a purpose. This is certainly not the, the final pot. Uh, one thing I do, this is a mica pot, and I, I know I mentioned that earlier, but uh, for those of you that don't know what a mica pot is, it's, it's a clay pot, but has a little bit of plastic in it. They used to be a lot less expensive than the actual um, uh, uh, clay pots that you can buy now, but um, the prices on these have gone up substantially. So there's, they're, pretty, they're pretty expensive, but they're just not really a, a show pot. They're perfect for uh, in your nursery because you can ding these up and they really don't scratch. They actually look like the real deal too when, when you oil them up. So um, just want to bring up that little point. So let's get started on this. And all, what I'm going to do is, gonna, of course, I'll start on the lower branches and I'm going to bring these down. And we're going to bring both sides down just like this um, and then eventually start shortening these in a little bit. We want these ones to be huge, thick branches, these bottom ones. So instead of cutting the end, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it out. And so it'll stay on my bench. We're going to bend it up. So this branch will just go straight up, but all the, the branch will continue to grow. I always look at it this way. Um, if you look at a house that's you know, getting or, or connected to the, uh, the, water, you know, the water treatment place, if you were treating one house, all you need is one pipe. But the more pipes you need, or the more houses you get on that line, um, I look at it to like the leaves. So for the more leaves, the more of a, the larger of a pipe. So when you have a large amount of leaves on a branch, this needs to be thicker to transport the water. You know, it's got to have be able to uh, support the the life for each house or each leaf. So the more leaves you can get on this branch, the better. And by letting that thing just go up and becoming a large branch, this is going to become thick very, very quick compared to if I were to trim it down and just wait for it to thicken in time. It's just not going to happen. So we want to, we want to keep the ends of this thing and just let it go up. It's going to look weird for a while, but it's, it's a temporary thing that you do until the branch is thick enough and then you'd cut it down back to the length once this is the thickness you want. So that's what we're going to do on that. And then the top of this, I've got a little bit of a carving issue I'm going to have to show you because it was just a flat chop. Uh, you can probably see right in there right now. And I'm not really getting the branch that I need to, or the center line to have uh, for my main trunk off this yet. So I think I've got to open this up, wait for a, a, a new pop to come off the top, and make that as my main lead uh, for the crown of the tree. Uh, but once I get this stuff opened up, light can get in and I can start getting more growth to come off that, off that branch or off that main trunk. So um, I'll bring the camera in. You can watch how I can wire. I'm going to use a pretty thick wire on the bottom and probably a thinner one up top. It doesn't take much to bend these. And uh, in Florida, growing ficus, it, these branches don't need to be wired very long. You're talking about a month, month and a half, and you're going to be taking wire off already because the um, wire will start to dig in because these things, this is starting to grow already. You can see all the tips, all the new growth on this tree and it's just going to keep getting better. It's getting into its growing season. So that's why we're working on the, the tropicals right now. So here we go. And I'm not doing finishing wiring on this. I'm just doing um, placement wiring. So you don't have to be uh, all the way out. All we're trying to do is open this tree up. So I'm not going to take it all the way to the end. Uh, maybe on some branches I will, but for the most part, I'm just trying to get this tree opened. And really, the, the edge of this tree is eventually going to be like right here. So I don't, really don't care about what that looks like. So take this wire out as long as I've got it, and we'll do it from there. And again, this is one of those ones I'm going to bend straight up. So I am going to take the wire out, but it's, it's for the purpose of bending the uh, branch up and not uh, putting it in a, in a uh, position for uh, the design of the tree. So there we go. We're going to bring it down. And again, we got a lot of movement in that tree, so we're going to put a little bit of movement in this branch as well. Don't want to make it real boring. Generally, when you have a branch that comes off, that's usually a bend on the outside. So it's an easy way to, to determine where you should put your, your movement. And again, this one's just going to go straight up. All right. Here we go. And this one that I wired off the other side, we're going to bring it right back in here. And that one I really don't need to be thicker, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip the end, up, uh, end of that off eventually. This one we're going to bring straight down. And it's already opening up. I mean, we're going to get a lot more sunlight to these poor weak branches in here. Um, so, wow, that area goes all the way up here. How awesome is that? And actually, I'm going to move that one all the way in here, actually, right, where are we going to put that? Right on the back, right where it belongs. Really cool. Now this stuff I could cut out right now, 
and probably will because we certainly don't want a branch anywhere growing in this section because we've got such a strong branch already. I'm just going to take these off. So I don't need a second trunk growing in there or anything that would distract from this main trunk. So it's just a matter of taking out all that little bits of foliage. And that actually shows off this trunk line a lot better. Ah, look how sad that is. A little bit of old wire in there. Wonder how long that thing's been done. So, time to dig that out. It does happen. I mean, that's probably been on there for at least three years because I knew this was going to be a main branch. Nice thing about ficus though is it doesn't really scar that bad. So something like this is just going to heal over. Sometimes, sometimes ficus will uh, scar, but for for us in Florida that grow so fast, that scar just doesn't last that long. So I'm going to dig this one out. I could leave it in, but it's better to take it out. And you can see it's coming right out. Crazy. That's what. That's called a wire scar. And it happens to the best of us. Sometimes it just the foliage just fills in so much, or you think that you're gonna come back and work on a tree and you totally forget about it. And there you go. And this gives me an opportunity to, to rub these aerial roots a little bit better as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that one out. Guys, that's in a bad spot for me. Don't really need it. I know it's gonna grow back, so why even play with it? Okay. Good. Now this wire, I don't see how I could possibly forget that this is on there. So, we'll go ahead. I really don't want to write the wire the same direction, but I will. Okay. That's some thick stuff. And again, this is one of those branches we're going to take all the way up and bend up at the tip. So it's just a matter of getting this one into place. This is the probably the main uh, branch off this tree because it's so low and it's definitely going to get some attention. So I want to put a lot of nice natural movement in it because it's going to be a, probably a focal point because the, the canopy is going to kind of blend a little bit together. But this one's going to be a pad all by itself. So you want it to look good. So we're going to bring it down. Now, by doing this, there is an actual aerial root on this already. Very well established. I can't cut that, can't take it off. So we're just gonna put a little bit of up and down movement in there. And a little forward and backwards as well. Give this some really good character. And at the end, just take it straight on up. That gives me an opportunity to take this branch in, take this branch back, and already I'm starting to develop a pad. I hope you can see that. Um, but there's a lot of good movement already in this. It's just a matter of getting it thick enough for it to be a, a a strong looking branch. Good. Okay. And this will heal over. At least the cambium is still intact, so it's just a matter of just spreading and going through. It's, it's, I'm not worried that that's, uh, that branch is in trouble or anything like that. I'm going to continue to work my way around, so I'm going to move the camera back and you can kind of watch in while I continue to open this tree up. Okay, to get you caught up, here's what's going on. Uh, I've gone ahead and just wired down the, the main branches. A lot of this, the foliage that was growing inside the trunk really was just in a bad position. Even this is just like, what am I going to do with that? Unless I bring it up to the side, but it's really not anything that I really want. I really want a lot more foliage up here. And I really want a lot more foliage coming off the actual branches, not really off the trunk in this major part. Because really, I want this to be open because the aerial roots are going to fill it in. We're going to see a lot of those these uh, uh, lines coming straight down. And I kind of don't want to bury that with a lot of uh, confusion with too much foliage where you can't really see in very much. And as a last touch, it's easy to get foliage to grow in here when it's wide open like that. So I'm not concerned about have, not having enough branching inside. But what I do want is, uh, you can actually see that I'm starting to get some sunlight hitting the top of this trunk. That probably hasn't happened in a long, long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to open this up, bring this down, shorten these ones up here on the top, but just get a lot more light coming in there. So once we get light in here, we get more options because we'll have more branches to work with. So coming along pretty well. I'm just going to leave the uh, camera on and rolling while I continue to work the branches down a little bit uh, and continue to see what happens. I'll give that one a little spin to show you what's going on with the whole trunk.
always want to make sure you get sunlight to the branches. So I'm going to bring this one down, had to move that one back so I got sunlight. I got sunlight hitting here. Always want to make sure your branches are getting sun so that they, they remain strong. Um, your thinner branches you want to keep up top, so I'm going to continue to reduce the heavier branches like so. And now I've just got two thin branches to work with up there. So a little bit of thin wire on those to keep them in place is all I'm going to need. And we'll do one final movement or uh, style at the end and put some good branch movement placement as well. These are pretty heavy, so I'm just going to take the tops. And remember, clipping those terminal buds will help the tree start budding back and give us growth inside where we really want it, not really on the tips. Uh, it looks a little leggy right now. I'm just going to reduce some length on these because I really don't need these to thicken up. Just need these to kind of hold the positions that they're in. Good. And it's amazing how much larger this tree looks because I can go so much wider because of the, the, the large base. It can handle this type of uh, size and width because this is so massive. If that was a small trunk, it would look extremely small right now because of the comparison to the long branches. But being that they're so, such a massive trunk, it allows me to do this. That's some thick wire at the end there. Okay, and yeah, we're good there. There, bring you down, down. That one's fine. Okay, looks like we're just gonna do a little bit of trimming up top, get rid of some stuff, and we can actually start building the canopy and wait for a, a strong, strong trunk to come in. I think I'm gonna take this main one off um, and just have that back one as a, uh, a nice canopy part of the crown eventually. But right now I just don't need it. It's kind of blocking the sunlight a little bit. And that trunk really grew in the wrong, that part of the trunk grew in the wrong spot. So we're just going to take that off completely. I don't see any reason to keep it. And I also don't see my shears. Oh, there they are. Keep that one. Save this part of the crown. This one doesn't do anything for me at all. Now what I've got is a bunch of light hitting right here. So what I'm hoping is we're going to get a new growth coming in this area. And I can get rid of other stuff that might be blocking that sunlight. It's been in shade for so long in that area that it hasn't had an opportunity to give me some growth. So that's pretty much as far as we're going to go today. So I say that's about it for today. Um, hopefully it won't take three years for me to get another post on this thing um, to kind of give you an update, but 
I think we're going to be seeing a lot of good progress off this. I'm going to continue to, of course, wire this out a little bit more and get some nice movement in these branches. Uh, these are nice, going to be thick pads, and the canopy is going to be there eventually, so these, these tall branches will go away. But it'll probably be sitting right there and kind of come into about here. And that's going to be about the finished tree. So it's just going to be one massive trunk with a beautiful canopy on top. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, Orlando Bonsai TV, we try and put out videos as soon as we can. Uh, hopefully much more coming. Just got some new equipment. Uh, hopefully this is working. Uh, let me know if you like the uh, picture quality and the sound quality compared to the previous videos. And uh, always keep in touch. Make sure to subscribe. Talk to you soon.